from a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. You know, I'm really starting to get annoyed with your program. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show. Not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Well, it's... Like Is 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. So baby want a steak? Baby gotta wait, cause I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Yeah. Buy ya, lick it, don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Wanna get laid? Gotta be an oh. asshole. Spike, use prophylactics with Tabasco. Hit it, quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Poo. Gotta knock up, but you look in the switch. Pull a Hail Mary and jump that bitch. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. My kiss 101. My kiss 101. Class it's like it's 101, the ongoing on air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. More importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of like it's 101. This is where we talk to you boys who just don't get it. Let me remind you, before we tell you what this class is, let's tell you what it isn't so you don't waste your time calling in, okay? Don't bother calling in and asking what my credentials are to be a marriage counselor. I'm not a marriage counselor. Don't claim to be. And I am not here to help your marriage. I'm not here to improve your relationship. I don't claim to have credentials in this area. I've been married and divorced repeatedly, okay? And I'd be a fool to claim that I'm some expert in this area. Please, I'm begging you. If you've got problems in your marriage, call Dr. Phil, okay? Problems in your relationship, uh, you know, call uh, Dr. Uh, Turkey Neck. This is a class to tell guys how to get laid. How to get laid. We try to tell you how to get laid and how not to waste your time, money, on and energy on, on the women who will not give you what you want. That's what we're here for. I mean, please, all you 20-year-old guys who've got two kids, please stop calling in and ask me what you ought to do, okay? It's clear what you ought to do, but you've already decided what you're going to do. You've pretty much dug a big hole for yourselves, boys. Leave the phone lines open for people who have questions about getting laid. That's what this is all about. Well, I guess 101 students believe that the purpose of a date is to get laid. Dating equals porking. Seriously, that's what it is. We don't go on dates so we can go to a play or comedy club or a concert. That's not the purpose. I mean, we may do some of those things, but we're only doing it. We're only tolerating the presence of a woman. We're only listening to her yak, yak, yak as the price of admission to get laid. We pretend to be interested. We make all the appropriate noises. And then we want to get laid. We don't want to know your opinion about, uh, you know, uh, a new Madonna CD. We don't want to know your opinion about politics. We don't want to know um, really much of anything. How, how your boss treats you at work or about your ex-boyfriend and what a creep he was. 
if if you are saying those things and we appear to be interested, it's just because we're killing time until you're finally going to come back to your place with us and take your clothes off. We honestly don't hear a word you say until we've seen you naked. I'm not kidding. Not a word. Don't start testing us. Don't start quizzing us. Don't start saying that we're not listening. It's not that we're not listening. We can't hear. That's very different from not listening. We can't hear until we've gotten sex from you. And even after that, we're not that interested in what you have to say. That's the bottom line. Dating equals porking. The purpose of going on a date is to have sex. That's the one and only reason a guy goes out on a date. We're not, by the way, white guys not into dancing. Sorry, straight white guys. Anyway, not into it. Trust me. If you see a straight white male dancing opposite you on a dance floor, it's because he's just gritting his teeth and killing his time until he sees you naked. Don't ever get the idea that a straight white male wants to be on the dance floor with you. We don't. We don't know about dancing, and we don't care. Bottom line. We don't want to meet your friends or your family. Ladies, we have no interest in who your friends are. Getting to know your friends is just a big pain in the butt, and it helps you filibuster. It helps you kill time. When we're trying to get laid, it helps stretch the whole thing out. My friend is hungry. My friend is thirsty. My friend needs to go home. She's not feeling well. Uh, how about you uh, match up uh, my uh, fat friend with one of your friends? I mean, there's a million ways that friends are used to filibuster. No friends, no family. Meet her family, and she's going to think you love her, or that you're going to marry her. Certainly the family will think that and start uh, hammering away. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Are you feeling me on this? Like as one of one students don't spend more than $40 on a date, zero is optimal. Zero if you can. Forty dollars is the max. Try to avoid dinner. Try to have, have drinks with her after dinner. Try to hook up with her some other way. No coffee, no lunch, because those do not lead to sex. When a woman invites you to coffee or to lunch, ever invite a woman say, "Hey, let's have a drink sometime." And just say, "Well, why don't we have lunch tomorrow?" Ever had that conversation? I've had that conversation. In fact, I had it relatively recently with somebody. I said. After I get out of work, let's have a drink. And she said, why don't we have lunch tomorrow? And I said, I can't do lunch. Really, my day is booked up, but I have time after work. When a woman tells you, let's have lunch or let's have coffee, she's saying the following. I'm never going to have sex with you, ever, ever, and I'm certainly not going to have it anytime soon. Get used to it. That's what it is. Always turn down any attempts to steer you into lunch or coffee or meeting her family or hanging out with her friends. These are all ways of saying you're not getting any. By the way, boys, this is years of experience, I'm telling you. And by the way, don't pay attention to any of the women who call in here and say I'm wrong. Trust me. This is a lock. The minute she tells you, well, you know, my, my family's having a barbecue. Well, my friends are having a party. Well, um, why don't we just have a few drinks? A couple of my girlfriends will meet us. By the way, a date is between two people. There's no double dating. There's no bringing the fat and fugly friend along. No, absolutely not. Within the past year or two, I had a woman who literally, my first time seeing her, she was hot, hot, hot. And then she says, well, I'm out with my friend. Why don't we both come over? This was not for a threesome. This was someone who gave me a long lecture about monogamy, and she believes in monogamy, blah, blah, blah. If she's bringing the friend over, it's for one reason, to be her escape hatch. 
to be her excuse. No friends, no buying drinks for the friends, no buying dinner for the friends. No, no, no. I've got other tips for you, but uh, all you have to do is, of course, now join in on the conversation. And whether uh, you have questions on how to get laid, how to uh, avoid relationships, how to avoid commitment, how to avoid marriage... You call in if you've got questions about that. That I will talk to you about. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. There are women who listen to this program who frankly disagree with your professor. Your professor makes them angry. That's okay. Your professor can handle it. He's a big boy. So if you'd like to join the classroom discussion in my classroom here at Lycus 101, now is your time to do it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. My ex called me the other day. She said, "Oh, I'm having problems. I need to talk." It's been two years. She has two guys who she doesn't know who the, her baby father could be, and that would have been me too if it wasn't for Likus One Hundred One. It's Likus One Hundred One on the Tom Likus Show. Like us 101, I am your professor. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Christy, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Good. I just wanted to call and talk to you about the fact that um, I know you say it's casting and and you know that uh, when you generalize the fact that a lot of marriages don't work um, I just wanted to call and say that I'm a good example of what it does and just uh, let all the men out there know that there are no 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 I'm not going to do that because as I always say uh, the man a few months ago who jumped out the 16 story window and lived uh, I, it would not be wise to tell men to go out and jump out a 16-story window because they might live. Right. Marriage I, is I bad know, for men. It is no, There is no benefit for men. None. Well, for my husband, there is. No, there really isn't because whatever you're doing for him now, you could have done without getting married. Yeah, I guess you could say that, but... It's no, just... it's, it's a fact. Okay, well... I, I don't know. We just we're just great for each other, and I'm really really good to him. I handle like, all his, you know, his financial things. That's I all wonderful. All but he didn't have to get married to get that. Well, to me, he did. I wouldn't have stayed with him for years if he didn't marry me. Well, you stayed with him for years before he married you. Um, I stayed with him for one year before we got married, and then we've been married uh-huh. for three years. He's forty-two. I'm twenty-five. Yeah. And uh, we're doing great. And um, it's just not always bad to get married for men because my husband... For, was for men, it that. is. For men, it is. there's no benefit to getting married. Yeah, but he wouldn't have me, though. So. Well, he had you for a year. <laughs> yeah, but he wanted me for longer. And See that? So you, 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 of course, well, but you forced him to get married. Uh uh-uh, uh, I did not. I didn't force him. I didn't even bring it up and then he just asked me one night. I didn't even didn't even come up before he asked me either. Not oh, once. so he I could have had, so he could have had you longer. No, I probably because I had been in a relationship with someone for four years and he never proposed to me, so I told myself I wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't stay with him for more than a year or two. Um, and he knew that. That's to- why he proposed to you. Yeah, you're probably right. Right. Actually, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. There is no benefit for him to do this. Yeah. Well, I love you, Tom. I think you're great, and you're really entertaining. I listen to you every night on my way home from work, and um, I think you're doing a great job. Why, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Rick on the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101. Hello. Hello. Yes. Tom. Love your show. First time, long time. Thank you. 
Uh, so basically, I met this chick like two nights ago, and uh, I'm trying to avoid dinner and try to get laid and get you drinks to spend the least amount of money. I want to know the best route in your experience to take that. That's easy. Uh, the uh, the best route to that, you call a chick and you ask her, what time are you having dinner tonight? Okay. And she'll be stupid enough to tell you, oh, I don't know, seven thirty, eight o'clock, whatever. And you say to her, that's great, so you ought to be done about 9, 9.30. Why don't we hook up for a drink after that? Yeah, I've tried it before, and they try to, you know, reschedule it if I have to stay out, you know, too late. Like, try to push, oh, I'm, pat I'm late at work, it's 9.30, how about we get a drink, you know? And it hasn't worked before, so I'm trying to find the right route. Well, guess what? The chick who uh, is trying to get a dinner out of you is not the chick for you anyway. Yeah, I figured, you know, I'm basically paying to get laid. I mean, why am I going to take her to dinner, you know what I mean? Right. Spend money on her. <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly. So uh, they figured that, you know, we can take him out to dinner, and that's not basically paying for us to get laid. Why would you want to take him to dinner, you know? You don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just basically give her a call, try to ask her what time to go to dinner, and uh, push it till after that. Right. Awesome. Or awesome. you can tell her that you work every night until 8 or whatever. I mean, you these are chicks you hardly know, right? Yeah, so I've always wondered, you know, why chicks try to get you to dinner and they try to make you pay like these $100 dinners, you know, and expect nothing from it. Because women yeah. like to know that their vaginas have value. Yeah. It's like Alex Rodriguez wanted to test the free agent market, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, awesome. Eventually gives yeah. the Yankees what they want. Yeah, yeah, they're always trying to get money in some sort of angle and uh, give nothing in return, so. Exactly. Yeah, all these chick calling in, they're they're totally wrong. They know how it is. They know what women do. You know, they all do the same thing, 99% of them. There's always an exception to the rule, but... That's right. You know, yeah. So, awesome, Tom. That's great advice. You're always the man to talk to. So I just wanted to call in. Love your show. You're awesome. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. Here comes Frank on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Frank, how are you, Father? Doing okay, son. Great. Hey, uh, listen, Tom, I called you initially for uh, one of the issues that I'm going through right now, but, uh, you know, I just got this new idea that just popped in, in my head. Uh, I'm a student also on top of uh, being a full-time uh, police officer. I'm a student at a major university, and uh, I'm currently uh, about to, well, I'm in the process of graduating, and uh, every time I go to the uh, counselor's office, my counselor, she's smoking hot, and she's got this, I mean, smoking body, and uh, I feel that she's flirts with me all the time and you know i'm a young fella and i just i don't i feel like she wants me to talk to her and i think she doesn't want to cross that boundary but what would you advise me to do and uh so i can get in the sack well first of all uh frank you told dean another story which may also be a true story but it's not what you're telling me now correct uh why don't we talk about that part of the story Okay, uh, so the reason why I initially called was because uh, I've been dating this younger girl who's uh, 21 years old, and I've only known her for about uh, two months. And so basically, like I told Dean, I think I'm a bit of a puss because I haven't found a way to get rid of her, and I'm going against your rules. Uh, she's, she's, she's a nice girl, but I'm only too focused on my career right now, and uh, I think that we uh, I'm getting uh, attached to her in a different way, and I just... Uh, don't know how to get she doesn't rid of. live with you, does she? No, hell no, she doesn't. Okay, good. So when you say you can't get rid of her, how is she your girlfriend? Uh, she's not my girlfriend uh, per se, but uh, she's like what you. Uh, from what I've heard you say, she's like uh, she's like the number one picture in my bullpen, and uh, I have my relief pictures on the side. Right, and that's that's what you're working on is getting uh, signing another free agent to, to be in your bullpen. Correct. Yeah. All right. So uh, why do you want to get rid of her? I mean, are you giving her money? Are you paying her bills? Or what, why do you want to get rid of her? Uh, absolutely not. No, the reason why I want to get rid of her is because I think that uh, she she's moving to, to a level where I don't want her to go. And I don't want her, I don't want her to get involved with me uh, too emotionally, I, I, I would say, where, where she expects too much out of me. I don't, All right, well, I don't then why don't you just tell her the truth? I do, and every time I tell her the truth, she cries, and she. I tell her I don't want to talk to you. I'm too busy, and uh, she drives from a far distance to come visit me at my house, and she sh shows up in the middle of the night, and uh, basically begs for me to just 
just be with her. And, you know, I mean, she puts it on me, so I can't, I can't refuse that. Come on, well, you, well, sure you can. I, mean, I, I guess you... I can, and it's my fault for not doing that. Yeah, I mean, you've got other chicks out there uh, who are interested in you. You've got game. Uh, there's no reason you can't uh, just not open the door. And by the way, any man worth his salt has refused to open that door, including me. Correct. I have had chicks with those surprise visits who show up. And, uh, you know, on one hand, they make it sound like they're going to surprise you with a booty call. But in reality, they're checking to see if you have anybody else there. I see. You see? So would you recommend keeping her on the side and just playing it off? Uh, and then, and then, and then, just keep signing on my my free agent. Only if you're fairly certain that if you have a free agent at your place, that she won't show up and ruin things for you. And see, you that's probably the thing. she doesn't show up, but I mean, she gets upset. I know she would get upset if I was to, for well, instance, try to. We hit can't be worrying counter. about whether the little ladies get upset. You hear how I get into it with the little ladies here on the air. We can't be worrying about that. We uh, have to do what we want to do. And then if uh, she says, F you, I'm done, then all right, then you live with it and move on. But you'd be surprised how many women will actually tolerate your rules if you'll only make them. Correct. And so my recommendation is to make the rules and take your chances. So as far as the, uh, the, the second thing I was talking about, how would you go about, uh, you know, trying to get her attention? And also, I don't want to put her in a in a predicament where she's going to not want to talk to me or it's going to be awkward if she, if those aren't the messages she's trying to, uh, I guess, convey to me, which I think they are. I mean, I think they're pretty good messages. I'm, I'm reading her body language as she yeah. wants. I mean, she called me today, and why, why would a counselor call uh, one in 300 students she's got to counsel, you know? There's no I doubt. Just, why don't you take her out for a drink? Right. Tell her, let's talk over a drink. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Yeah. Always be can all, always be closing. That's what they said in Glen Gary, Glen Ross, ABC. Always be closing. Awesome. Also, Father, one last question. Can I get some literature about? Uh, I don't know the the the. Uh, I'm very inspired about your uh, your 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 mode of thinking and your your analysis of on different issues, aspects of life. Where, where can I get more? Uh, more literature about that well there or, really isn't any right now uh, there'll be a book at some point but uh right now uh, you can hear it right here on the air and you can call me and ask me a question anytime you like hey frank thank you good luck for that 1-800-5800-TOM sherry on the tom likas show hello hey tom hey tom hey. why on earth would any woman want to live with the guy for years upon years and put out and do laundry and cook food and and pay half the bills and do all that when they could just go get a roommate and still be able to date any guy they want to. Otherwise, they're stuck. Well, in let's look at it the other way around. Why would any man want to pay for all your expenses, pay for your groceries, pay your rent, pay your utilities, and the reward they get is that they can't date other people? Well, they can pay somebody else to do all that stuff in data. Yeah, by the way, um, I, you know and what? I've calculated it out in dollars and cents. A maid is cheaper than a girlfriend. No, that just depends on who that girlfriend is. If she's a gold digger, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. No, don't, no, no. Just the regular daily expenses of having to deal with your car payments and your car insurance, having oh, to pay. Wait a minute. Most women today are very independent. They buy their own no, cars. No, 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 uh, they, no, no, they're not. Most women are not like that. Well, then their daddies didn't raise them right, did they? Well, I, well who cares? The point is, I don't deal in what, what, what daddy should have done. I deal in what is. Well, my point is, there's no way that I would spend year after year living with a man. Great, because I wouldn't stuff. recommend that any man live with you anyway. And then just have him say, oh, I would like you to meet my girlfriend. What's a girlfriend? A girlfriend I, Again, I'm not disagreeing with you. You should live alone. In fact, I think all women should live alone. I think that's fantastic. You do that. Well, you know, they probably would, but these guys are always saying, hey, come jump in the sack with me. Hey, come spend We're not saying move in with us. We're just saying have sex with us. 
Oh, no, they want you to move in because they want their laundry done and their house clean and their food laid out. Uh, but I tell those guys all the time, you shouldn't be shouldn't be moving women in. It's cheaper to have a housekeeper. They don't want to spend the money on a housekeeper. They expect these women Again, to move I in. think I'm agreeing they're fools, okay? You're arguing with me, and I'm telling you, I think they should get a housekeeper. They don't want to spend the money. They well, think because they have no idea how much a girlfriend costs. They don't know. <laughs> well, maybe they don't. Then they're too young to be living with somebody if that's the case. Well, they, no, no guy should be living with anybody. Have your own place. Decorate it the way you like. Have your soup bowl party. Have your strippers. Have your plasma screens. Get laid when you want to. Live the life I live. You know, Tom, I married my husband after living with him for 12 years. And we're married, and it's been 20 years since we've been married. And you know what? There is no way on earth I would have married this man had I not lived with him first to find out what he's all about. No way. Well, again, I'm not suggesting that guys get married, much less live with a girl. Well, I wouldn't have lived with him for another 20 years if we weren't married. Well, but again, if a woman did that with me, lived with me and said, I'm not going to live with you another day, I'd be like, well, okay, let's call them over. Well, you know what I did? I told him, I'm moving out. I'm moving on. I'm not going to stay here and be All right. for another so 20 you, years. So you terrorized him. You and blackmailed him. You turned him into a hostage. Oh, no, That's what no, you did. No. Yes, you did. There was no blackmail. No, no. You forced no him. Blackmail. You told him, if you don't marry me, I'm leaving. So no, he, he broke down and did it. I never told him that either. That's what I you just said, said to if me. if you don't marry me, I'm leaving. I said, I'm not going to live with a man for the rest of my life. Same why, difference. Why Same difference. Darling, you're splitting hairs. The point thing. is, what you said made him act, and that's called an ultimatum. No, I think the man didn't want to lose a good thing is what no, that was. Uh, uh, no, but it was an ultimatum. Uh, what's wrong with that? Uh, uh, here's what's wrong with that. I don't respond to ultimatum. I don't do it. I won't do it. No woman is going to tell me what to do, Period. What is wrong with a man not wanting to lose a really good relationship just because what? There's always another. The there's relationships are like buses, dear. Oh, if you miss one, there's another one coming down the road. Another loser or maybe a, uh, maybe a gold digger. Maybe I, this one that he was with. Personally, was I think the guys are better off without relationships at all. Hang on a second here, Sherry. Bart, what did you want to say to Sherry here? Wait, wait, stop. We're on the air. You can't curse. Watch your mouth, Bart. Forget what he truly wants. All he truly right, he's, to not, he's not listening to me. Uh, that, that's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Unbelievable. Guys, I, I, I say this, I'm going to say it every day until you finally learn. This is a radio show broadcast on federally licensed frequencies, regulated by the Federal Communications Commission. You can't call in here and use the F word. Not in any context. You can't say it and then say, oh, pardon my French, right? That stuff. You can't do it, period. You can't do it. I can't make this any clearer. You can't curse. And I won't let you do it. Got it? one 800 800 Tom is our telephone number. It's like it's 101. Tom, Tom, Tom. Nipples. Tom like it. one 800 800 Tom. <laughs> You're unbelievable. The Tom Likas Show. 97.1 3 FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. It's Likas 101 from Hollywood. I want 800 800 tom It's our telephone number. I am your professor, Sonia. Hello. Hi, Tom. This is Sonia. I'm off I just said this is Sonia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Um, I just want to make a few points with you. The first is, if you don't live with the girl, does that mean you don't like to snuggle? I don't recommend snuggling. Why is that? Because I think guys should get their business done and get out of there. Okay. 
But you don't like snuggling, but lots of other people do. Snuggling sends a message to a woman that we actually care about you. And we don't want to mislead you. Even guys that don't care about girls oftentimes just like the comfort of something. They're who's... fools for doing it. Okay, so you don't like snuggling. I can handle that. It's not a matter um, of not liking it, dear. It's a matter that I don't want to convey the idea that I care about the person I'm having sex with. Okay, and, and oftentimes it doesn't convey that, but if that's your opinion, you're entitled to have that. There are a couple of other points if we can move on. Um, the other thing is, I've been listening to you for a little while now when I'm driving home from work. It's rather entertaining. Um, one of my little issues I have, however, is that whenever people do have valid arguments against you, and you're a very experienced and very... Oh, dear, I, I'm going to cut you off right here. This show is not your opportunity to critique the show, okay? This show is about asking questions about sex and relationships. And so if, if what you're about to say, and I know it is, is a critique of the way I do the program, that's not what we're doing today. Okay, then how about we talk about my third point, which is, like, for example, I'm a fairly desirable piece of ass, okay? You tell people not to take girls out to dinner. Right. Now, I have gone out with guys that are beautiful and guys that are ugly and guys that make a lot more than I do and guys make a lot less than I do. But I can't go out with every guy that asks me out. That's completely impossible. One of the one of the few things that you know I do require before I go out with them, and after that point, I'm more than halfway in. But the first dinner to show that you know he's a gentleman, he's interested, he buys me dinner. We are after not that, in the we're not in the relationship business, the gentleman business, and we certainly don't live up to women's requirements. If you have requirements. Most of us are out. I'm just talking about getting asked. I'm not talking about relationships. Darling, Every uh, again, you know, the requirement for getting asked should be that you are attracted to somebody or that you in some way think that you're going to have a, a good time. That's it. Spending money on you is not a way to do that. The times after that, because, like, I don't like to, you know, have sex with a different person every night. So the times after that, I usually pay more than my half, more than my share. Most women don't. Okay, well, I think that the kinds of women that you're teaching them to get are trash. Darling, I'm not. that's not what I'm teaching them. Most women, period. Not the women I'm teaching guys to get. Most women don't ever plan to spend any money. Okay, well, if they want a woman that's, like, worth Lane, or there aren't that out. many women like that. So you're just teaching them to get the trash that there's an event. Get what you can get and get out. Okay, so for like an actually desirable piece of ass or something. Darling, there are many desirable, you don't there. understand. Many desirable pieces of ass, hotter than you are, younger than you are, have very low self-esteem. And they can be easily exploited. Any man can be exploited as well. And but I'm telling the guys how to make the girl the one who gets exploited. That's what this is all about. Okay. I can I can appreciate them, that then. Again, appreciate that the things you're teaching these people are how to get trash and how to keep Not, trash. darling, again, I'm not going to have you reposition what I'm doing. Uh, it's not going to work. Because, believe me, there are women hotter and younger than you with low self-esteem who, if given the right amount of backhanded compliments or told no enough, will do anything we want. And we're not going to have to put up with any woman's demands, as you just called it. With, with the same amount of talent as I have? We don't care about your talent. Are you a hooker? So, no, but I'm... What kind of I'm, talent? You play the doll. <laughs> You're not, I, I, you can't even say that on the radio, dear, as you should know. Oh, pardon me, I... That since it wasn't curse word, it was okay. No, it's not. Okay. But the bottom line is, there's many women with that kind of talent. But you think 
that okay. will put out without having to spend the kind of money we'd have to spend on you. And then going to dinner and pretending we care about all the, 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 the crap you want to talk about, which we don't. And having better relationships and having sex in and out of relationships, you think that sex is the same? Like, if you're, if you don't have sex regularly with somebody, you can't achieve, like, the same levels of gratification. That's, by the way, not only is that not true for guys, there are women that's not true for also. It is totally true for guys. No, no, it's, uh, darling, it's not. By the way, guys look at sex the way we look at pizza. You know, there's the pizza, for square pizza, round pizza. There's pizza from uh, the old-fashioned mom-and-pop store. There's pizza from Pizza Hut. There's pizza left over from yesterday that's sitting in the refrigerator. It's cold. The way guys look at pizza is there's no bad pizza. And that's how we look at sex. I, I completely agree with you on the marriage thing and the religion thing. Guys do not require all that foreplay. We do not require all that listening and talking and pretending and role playing and all that crap that women are into. All guys need is, is a woman is like a, a human uh, uh, toilet. That's what it is, a human urinal. It's the, the funny thing is, is that even though you say that, almost every guy I know, that's what they're trying to do to me when that's what I'm trying to avoid because I realize that I'm not ready for those things. Darling, believe me, again, just because you say no doesn't mean there aren't other women saying yes. And I just, I think that for what you're teaching them, they're going to get less value. You must remember, darling, that, that what drives women crazy, women think they have a vagina monopoly. That if we're talking to you, that you are the one and only person we're going to talk to or the one and only person we have interest in. And therefore, you can make your little demands and stamp your little feet and everything, and we're going to jump. But guess what? There's plenty of other sluttier women than you out there who look as good as you or better, who are younger than you, hotter than you, who will do exactly what we want without having to jump through hoops. But do you really feel as good being with a woman who will be with any guy? Yes. You really, feel, you really feel as happy? Long as I'm on the list. Let's say there's a nightclub and there's a big line to get in and you see a bunch of people get in and there's some who are made to wait outside, but you are told, okay, go in. Do you say no? Because the club is full of people. No. You waltz right in past the rest of the line. And that's how we see women. Okay. It's like for, with your work, for example. The more work you put in, the harder time you put in, the more reward and the more satisfaction you get. In some cases with them... It doesn't women, work that way with sex. Job. Does it work that way with sex? With sex, the more of a jerk you are, the more women respond. And I don't care if you don't respond to that. Many women do. I know what many women do, especially if you go to strip clubs, for example. I don't go to strip to clubs. To... I don't go near strip clubs. I'm showing an example of women that are hot with low self-esteem. But I don't go to strip clubs. I don't date strippers. Most men do. Again, I'm not talking about most men. I'm talking about me now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you switched from me. And I'm telling you that many men don't date strippers. And those who do, I tell them not to. I'm talking about women with low self-esteem. Such as strippers. Darling, hot, there, are hot, there are models with low self-esteem. There are actresses with low self-esteem. There are chicks who work as the Jägermeister girl at a bar giving out shots who have low self-esteem. Okay? Uh, there are plenty of hot chicks with low self-esteem. Right. And Actually, they're very I'm easily fine. they're very easily played. Prior to being interrupted, I was... I, I darling, I don't it. need your critique. I've been doing this show since before you were born. I don't need your help. <laughs> You're so cute. I'll interrupt any time I want. It's my show. And it's really sweet when you get frustrated and interrupt people. Uh, I'm not the least bit frustrated, dear. And much as you think you're an amateur psychiatrist, darling, you're not fooling anybody. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Another hour of Light is 101 is coming up. Don't go anywhere. The Tom Likas Show.